Hello everyone, hello all the coders, users, promoters, and the international community from the OpenSUSE and GNOME communities. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Audrey Tong, Taiwan's Digital Minister, uh, and I've been working on OpenSUSE communities for the past 20 years. So first, let me start by saying happy birthday. Open source, uh, this term was defined, coined, a strategy made, an initiative made, exactly 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it started as a fork of the free software movement. The free software movement, uh, which has been going on for like 15 or more years before the open source movement, um, defined four fundamental freedoms on which the open source movement is born. Those freedoms uh, on software are the freedoms to use software, the freedom to change software, the freedom to copy software, and the freedom to fork software. Those are the four fundamental freedoms as defined by the Free Software Foundation. Open Source at the time is a marketing campaign that tries to sell this freedom to fork as something that is not only about human right and about liberty, but also about practical usefulness. And it's been very successful. We see Netscape INC first joining, uh, which now leads to the Mozilla and Firefox initiative. We see this year Microsoft embraced open source and indeed acquired GitHub. And so um, we're seeing a merge between the various different communities that was previously very interested in one part or another. In other words, it has been a very good campaign to promote social innovation. And at the beginning, the fork from the free software community to the open source community in the US was a hard fork. A hard fork is something that breaks compatibility. It is something that uh, moves community in different directions. It is something that results in conflict. But uh, recently, uh, as late as 2015, I think, uh, both initiatives made a definite statement saying that we're now moving toward uh, similar directions. But this movement has already, uh, this reconciliation has already happened in Taiwan. In 1999, the Taiwan's first open source workshop, people deliberated about how to reconcile this new marketing campaign open source and the old free software tradition. And indeed, in uh, year 2000, the community here decided collectively on a term a software liberty association or SLAT that is neutral to the both movement and that can promote the two values at the same time. And I think this highlights one of the main advantage in Taiwan, in that we're not seeing democracy as opposition between two diverse, uh, two opposing values, but rather a conversation and indeed reconciliation between many diverse values. And so um, we're now taking the idea of open source to the general idea of open innovation, that is to say innovation that allows for forks. 20 years ago, people look at fork and think it as a bad thing. Indeed, in the jargon file, um, Eric Raymond said, forks are almost always bad. But to 20 years uh, from that time, today, we see fork every day. On GitHub, a good project is a project that has uh, hundreds of forks. Um, in blockchain governance, in mutual distributed ledgers, a good chain is a chain that manages softworks well, that transitions into new technologies. In other words, we're now encouraging forks that are softworks, that are forks with the intention to remain compatible and to be one day merged by the consensus. And so I think this is a good demonstration of the open source spirit in many other areas. I'll use one particular example. Here in Taipei, we, we have a social innovation lab. It's in the Taiwan uh, Air Force, the TAF, uh, near the Jingbo Flower Market. This space is co-created by hundreds of people in a co-creation workshop style and entirely in the open source spirit. By that, I mean the designers actually laid out the blueprints of this uh, base. And then we asked all the social innovators to come every week and brainstorm and ideate and make their alternate visions of how this space is to be used. And after five such meetings and hundreds of social innovators who participated, we co-created this space dedicated for social innovation. And in here, whatever people wished for and that the governments can help deliver, we delivered. People asked for this space to open until 11 p.m. every day, and that we did. 
people ask for a kitchen for a resident chef, and that we did. And they said, it's great that the minister uh, hosts a discussion every Wednesday. So don't stop, just keep coming every Wednesday. And that I did. And so every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., this is my office hour, and anyone working on social innovation is welcome to attend. And we're also improving this idea of forking uh, to the whole society through the Social Innovation Action Plan, which for the next five years, we're going to allocate about 8.8 .8 billion NT dollars toward all the different sectors. And the government's role has drastically changed in this plan. I think the Open Society community put it best. Instead of saying, you know, for the next three years, we're just going to develop this, 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 and this project in a top-down fashion, we're now saying we're just here. And anytime you find anything that the government is blocking in your way, we will help you resolve it. So instead of uh, commanding people and working for the people, the government in this social innovation action plan is working with the people to resolve any potential conflicts. And so here in the social innovation lab, we see a lot of open stores, and indeed this is also open hardware actually, uh, experiments running around. Last year, uh, we partnered with the MIT Media Lab, who introduced this persuasive electric vehicles, or PEVs, that are autonomously driven tricycles and they're pretty slow, so um, it doesn't harm anyone if it runs into buildings or whatever. But it's all open source, and uh, it could be modded, that is to say, to be modified. So the students here uh, in this uh, mobility hackathon took this autonomous driving tricycle and forked it in every which way, trying to communicate uh, to the human society how does this AI looks in our world. So instead of just asking people to adapt to technology, through this kind of co-creation, we're asking the technology to adapt to people and to social needs. And so whenever our existing regulation um, becomes a burden, becomes an obstacle to such social innovations, we're now meeting every week to resolve any regulatory uh, burdens, any regulatory blockage that would prevent such social innovations from happening. So feel free to check out Sandbox or GTW. So for a fork to be a soft fork, a eventual merge must be made. And for a sandbox experiment, a eventual consensus must be made. So we're also using open source AI technologies such as Polis here to co-create policies. And for each experiment, people will have very different feelings. And so we use this open space. And you will note here that for each sentiment, people can click agree or disagree and then move in their clusters. But what it doesn't have is a reply button. Because we don't have a reply button, people don't spend time discrediting each other. The trolls have no room to play. Every time uh, people contribute, they only add to the consensus-making picture. They don't subtract from it. And so in a carefully guarded space with safe space and code of conduct, we often see after each participatory campaign, people converge on the consensus statements People agree to disagree on certain divisive statements, but they don't spend time on it. People just spend time on refining the consensus until that we can all find our common values and find some solutions that works for everyone. And I think this is what, how we celebrate forking, and this is how we merge the forks into the society, into social innovation. In closing, I would like to read a prayer that I wrote when I first became the digital minister almost two years ago. It goes like this. When we see Internet of Things, let's make it an Internet of Beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. And when we hear that the singularity is near, let us always remember that the plurality is here. Thank you very much.